Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Now, on today's episode, well, I was planning to do a proper Zero to 60 episode on this car and see if the diff has made much of a difference to its zero to 100 times. However, I've just remembered that I haven't fitted the proper brake bracket for the rear caliper, so I need to get onto that and get those pads sitting properly before I do too many miles. Now, speaking of too many miles, on Saturday, uh, you might have seen the vlog, we actually drove to Queensland Raceway. Now, that's about, well, it was a two hour drive from here. Um, it's all round with a bit of stopping. It's done a five hour round trip. And on that trip, we got caught in a torrential rainstorm. Like I haven't driven in rain that heavy in ages. And it was on the highway. So for about 30 minutes, it was insane amounts of water. Um, now, unfortunately, still haven't got the aircon regas, so we didn't have any air conditioning to demist the window. The only way we could, and it was quite warm, so the only way we could stop the windscreen from demisting or from misting up was to have the blower motor on max fresh air. And it did, it, it kept the, clean, the screen clean, um, but it did lead to another problem. So after about 20 minutes of the heavy rain, David noticed that the footwell on the passenger side was actually really wet. And yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a concern. I think, shit, we got another water leak. We got the tail light water leak or whatever it is in the boot, and now we got it leaking in the front. Turns out that it was actually the BMS cabin filters. Now I've had these for about a year, and they've never let any water in, but it was just so heavy. And I guess having the blower motor on max fresh air might have just been drawing enough mist in that. But here's a clip of what I found when I popped the panel filters off. So yeah, as you can see, there was actually a fair bit of water in the blower motor, which is slightly concerning. Um, but yeah, like I said, I didn't get any footage of it, but I was, I was literally terrified driving at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. I think I ended up slowing down to about 80. That's how heavy it was. Um, but I think it's gonna be okay. It was just that particularly heavy rain. Let's get onto the calipers. Before we do, I just thought I'd show you guys underneath, because I did have a quick sneak before. So if you've been following along, um, yeah, I think it was, Thursday we did the first drive and then Friday there was oil leaking down off the water pump. So after that massive five hour trip, the oil is gone from the water pump. So hopefully it was just residual. It looks like we've done this engine swap and I, mean, I really don't want to jinx myself, but I don't think we've got any oil leaks. I'm as confused as you guys are. So that is a huge win. There is still a little bit of oil residue coming out of the bell housing. That is because the rear main seal on the old engine was leaking. So the bell housing, I can't do this one handed. The bell housing up here still had oil in it. I should have cleaned it out, but she's actually looking pretty dry. Everything is all good. While it's up in the air, I am gonna just double check the tail shaft bolts are still tight. That's the one thing I haven't checked yet. I'm just paranoid about things coming loose which is what you do when you've been racing so many times. Um, but yeah, on this one, we're gonna get those caliper brackets swapped out. All right, I'll get these wheels off. I'll check that tail shaft and you'll see me again shortly trying to fit up these new brackets. I probably should have explained, if you're new to the channel, uh, long story short, I bought these Brembo replicas. Yeah, that's what we'll call them. Um, from China about two months ago. There's a full video on it, which I will link in the corner. Um, but yeah, long story short, I did a hell of a lot of research on trying to get some Chinese calipers. Now, I don't like they say Brembo. I will be changing the logo once I get this car back on the road and properly sorted. But the, the thing with it was, the company I bought it from is called Dickass, and you don't get a lot of confidence when you speak to them. Um, there were so many backwards and forwards emails to try and ensure that what they sent me were gonna be correct, and what they sent me was not correct. It was close, but the issues were the rear caliper fitment and also the rear caliper brake line that they supply. So they did supply it as a full uh, rotors, calipers, lines, bolts, bolt-on kit, supposedly, with pads. Um, basically, the rear brake line is about twice the length it needs to be, and um, that's why it's looped around dodgily. And the other issue, and it's bloody hard to see with the GoPro, but the caliper alignment is about two mil further out than it should be. Um, and you can get a little bit of a gap in there. Now, the issue with that is the edge of the cal sorry, the edge of the pad hangs off the back of the disc. Now, it's only about one or two mil, but it is enough to, well, it's not right. So you're not getting full pad contact with the rotor. Not great at all. Now, if you've been following this, along oh the other issue was the the brackets they sent me as well had a 12 mil hole here instead of a 10 mil hole 
and it looks like uh, they did supply the right ones. So they have supplied new bolts as well. Um, but I managed to put a heli coil in the brackets they sent me and got these sort of on apart from the alignment. This is supposed to fix everything. Now this is the third set of brackets that I actually did up for me. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but I remember spending like six or eight hours backwards and forwards with them trying to explain the problems. They said, yeah, all sweet. They redid the brackets and they sent me a picture of them. And I looked at them straight away and said, that ain't gonna fit. Um, so this is the third set they've done up. Hopefully it's all correct. And we also have a new set of brake lines. I'm gonna get these calipers removed. Now I wanna get some decent brake fluid in this. At the moment, it's just a generic dot four fluid. Um, and I'm not gonna do the brake lines until I've got the correct fluid because I don't think I've got enough to re-bleed everything. So I'll leave the brake line attached to the caliper for now, but let's get the caliper unbolted. All right, so everything is undone, in case you're panicking, the caliper is hanging on a strap. The, let's have a look at the brackets first. So this is the first bracket they sent me from China and that's what I had to do. I had to grind that away to get it to sit up where it needs to sit without hitting the knuckle, hub, whatever you wanna call it. And also had to put these threads in to get the bolts to work. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sort of works, but it's just not quite right. The issue with it is it leaves that section. Hopefully you can see it along the top of the pad there where it's not shiny. That section there was hanging over the back of the disc. Aside from that, the actual coverage and alignment was all really good. You can see the way the pads have worn. Um, but yeah, it's just that, that surface there. Now I've done about, well, oh, probably about a thousand kilometers, maybe, maybe 800 kilometers, because we did that 500K road trip. Um, so the pads haven't really worn much, but I did want to make sure, might just put a little bit of, a, to be fair, you can't really feel that. You cannot feel that lip. So they're gonna keep wearing fine. I might just file it down, just that very edge, just so that we don't get an uneven pad wear, or I'll work something out, make sure it's fine. But let's show you the difference with the, the brackets. So I'll put that one that way, and that one that way. It's probably gonna be quite hard to do one-handed. But if we line those holes up, so the mounting holes are the same, we are moving the caliper, that gap there, so about that two mil closer into the center of the hub, which should sort out this issue here. I really hope the camera's picking everything up. All right, I'll try and mount that up onto the car. So one thing I have learned from doing this, you do need to take the pads out while the calipers are actually bolted up. It's a bit hard getting the pins out because they are just press fitted when the calipers are off. But man, that's an easy, easy way to fit calipers. Um, but yeah, it's just these two pins that hold them in place and an anti-rattle clip. This is the first time I've tried to do it. So let's see if I get it around the wrong way. And do you fit the clip first? Let's see how we go. Oh, they go through that way, don't they? Okay, so that's the top pin in nearly in. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. Get this one in a bit. Push that down. That was much easier than expected. Yeah, I'm trying not to. What? That's the calipers, pads fitted. Wow, all right, alignment looks sweet. I'll show you guys. Shall I use the other camera because I think the wide angle and the light will be better. All right, so hopefully you can see there, the pad is now not sticking out past the disc. We've got really good alignment. Sweet. All right, I'll do these up and I think we're, we're winning with these brackets.
Actually, I nearly forgot to check. So we've now, because we've moved the caliper a couple of million, we need to make sure that the hat on the rotor clears the pad. Moment of truth, will the paper slide through? Piece of paper slides through. You guys probably can't see. But there we go. It just gets a bit dark in there. I did film it with another angle, but we can get paper through there. So the pad is clearing the hat. That's friggin' awesome. The new bracket fit. So I'm pretty happy with that because it was, it was a huge backwards and forwards trying to give them the instructions and getting them to correct the data file that they were using to CNC these brackets up. But we have moved the caliper that way. And something else I haven't mentioned on camera before, we've also moved the caliper that way as well compared to the original ones. The original one I had to space out with these spaces, space the bracket out, and that would move the caliper back that way. But it still wasn't perfect. And the way they fixed that is the height these holes are from the ground. Hopefully that uh, is showing there, but we've got a bigger gap on this side. Well, more material just here than we do just here. So the new brackets are mint. That's good. And damn, that's easy to change the pads on these if you need to. I know the fronts aren't the same. Alrighty, and we're getting there. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one and I'll let you know if I have any problems. I don't know if the time lapse just caught that, but the ratchet just slipped off and I was doing it like this and I smashed my head on there. It'll be interesting to see if we have a bruise later on. <laughs> anyway, uh, she's nearly done. Caliper's got to be mounted back up. And pad's back in. That's what you get for rushing. Smash your head on a brake disc. So that is that one also all mounted up. Now, just because I'm paranoid and don't trust the supplier, we're going to just make sure we've got good clearance to the hat on this one as well. Yep, paper slides through easily. All the alignment, front to back, everything is perfect. Dick ass, finally got it right. It only took three goes. So that's it. This is gonna be the last video on dick ass fitment. That sounds horrific, but that's what it is. Um, they've actually changed their name to Dick Ace as well. Uh, that sounds much better. Don't know where these guys come up with their naming. Um, but yeah, fitment wise, we've now got a kit that actually fits an E92, which is a miracle, almost. Um, now, although I haven't done any hard braking, I was waiting to get these calipers aligned properly so we didn't wear through those pads too much. As you can see, it was a fraction of pad wear in the 800 to 1000 Ks I've done. I did two or three high speed brakes, like from 200, and the modulation you get with these brakes is insane compared to the standard brakes. Um, I can liken it to, you don't get the initial grab or bite that, you ha that I have with the standard brakes, and that's due to the size of the pistons on these. Uh, both the front and rear calipers, we've gone to a bigger piston diameter, so the force required to move the caliper, or move the pad, is less. Um, so that means I don't get the initial hard pedal, um, because that pedal does more work than it used to. So around town, they do feel softer, but at high speed, they feel insanely good. And to be fair, it took me it wouldn't have been 10 minutes to get used to the pedal feel around town. At the end of the day, these are brakes designed for circuit racing, really. They are complete overkill for highway use. Um, I could increase the pedal feel by putting an M3 master cylinder on there, uh, and that would stiffen up the pedal a little bit, but I would lose a little bit of modulation. And like I said, it does not take long to get used to how these work, and I can lock the wheels up pretty easy, and braking from that high speed, I feel much more I can transfer the weight from the for like accelerating to decelerating a lot smoother than I could with the um, with the original brakes. I'm definitely happy with them. Um, pad compounds seem okay. They have sent me another set of pads. They've actually sent me their racing pads, which are pink. Um, they actually sell these for 200 US dollars, which is a hell of a lot of money for something out of China. Um, 
yeah, I'm not gonna put them on yet. I'm going to get a bit more miles on the street pads and I'm thinking about doing an actual circuit track day on this. I'll run it at low boost and go and have some fun around a track. Hopefully we don't get any oil surge, we'll see. I'm not gonna have semi slicks on it, so I shouldn't be getting any crazy Gs through the corners, but I just have a bit of fun and I might put those pink pads in for the track use. Uh, we'll see how we go, but yeah, for street driving, this setup looks sick, which is what I was after. It looks better than a, a much better than a standard brake setup and it works quite well. All right, guys, I will end it off there. I'm almost a bit lost for words. I did not expect these brackets to fit properly. Man, you can tell we're coming into summer. It's hot. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.